David, you're in the world of international criminal law, a chief prosecutor at Sierra Leone. Uh, what's that all connect to you in your world? Well, let me go back to uh, uh, my hero, uh, Robert Jackson. Uh, I had the privilege and honor of being the second American to be a chief prosecutor in an international tribunal. And as I was getting ready to write my opening statement against the leadership of the Civil Defense Force, a horrific group who committed unspeakable acts, uh, I began writing it about three weeks prior to the opening statement. And during this time frame, I began rereading Telford Taylor's book about Nuremberg. Uh, and just wanted to make myself more aware of the connection. Because again, this is all linked in many, many ways, and I don't want to give you a law lecture. I just want to make this more human. So I'm writing my opening statement. And at the international level, that's a, well, any opening statement of any prosecutor, it's a special moment, regardless of the case. But certainly, uh, at the international level, it's something that is, uh, uh, very, very important because what you're doing is you're representing uh, the victims of a horror story. And in, in the West African tragedy, we're looking at the murder, rape, maiming, and mutilation of over 1.2 million human beings. And so I'm, I'm representing them. I'm not representing myself. This isn't about me. So I, I'm trying to get the four corners of this, trying to get a feel. How do I capture that? in a way that represents them. And because I was in West Africa and because this was an African tragedy, I chose to write my opening statement, but I only wrote the first half of it, the general crimes, the general situation. And then I invited a Sierra Leonean barrister on my team to give the second half, give the more specific crimes uh, so that the world could see that this is both an international and a West African court. And I remember we were sitting around uh, kind of going through it again, and I have, which I will donate to the Jackson Center someday, 15 drafts of that opening statement and watching it evolve. And I can remember I, we were getting close. You know, we're getting to the point where I'm going to give it. And we're having a committee because I believe very much in round tables. And so I have all my senior lawyers and I'm reading my opening statement to them. Uh, and I am describing things as uh, I told the tribunal in that opening statement, uh, believe the unbelievable, because there's nothing in the English language or any language in the world that can describe what I'm about to prove to you that took place here. And so I finished mine, and then my colleague uh, began to read hers. And as she was reading, she got about halfway and she just put her head on the table and wept. Uh, that just in some ways just shows you the emotion of an opening statement. And so, uh, again, I'm rereading Telford Taylor's book. I've taken uh, Robert Jackson's opening statement. I've read that, certainly realizing there's no way I can do anything half as what he did. But again, like he did, representing the victims of the Holocaust and World War II, I felt it incumbent upon me to represent the victims of a 10-year tragedy that consumed millions of human beings. And it's a, it's a privilege, it's an honor, and it's a duty to do it right. So I can remember it the night before, I reread the first portions again of, of Robert Jackson's opening statement, and I'm playing in, in, I'm in my office in Sierra Leone, Freetown, Sierra Leone, uh, and I'm playing in the background the uh, theme song to Saving Private Ryan, just to kind of get myself in the right place. Uh, and then that day, as I was in the courthouse, was built kind of out my window, and I officers and cars and armored cars and lots of guns, uh, another story. I got out, went to my office, took the original copy of the opening statement, kind of was flipping through it. And as I was going through, people in my office were coming and knocking on my door, and my secretary just let him in. And they were just walking by, shaking my hand, because they realized that history was about to take place 
for the people, and many of them were from West Africa. And I looked out my window, and I saw the people of Sierra Leone lining up to go into their courtroom, which they built to listen to this opening statement at the beginning of a trial, a criminal trial, where the rule of law is more powerful than the rule of the gun. So I am not someone who, as I've done this all my life, so I wasn't particularly nervous, but I really felt the presence of Justice Robert Jackson uh, and his legacy. And so when I, I was told it was time and uh, my staff comes with me and stuff, uh, Robert Jackson was walking next to me as I walked up that hill to the courtroom. Uh, and then you walk into the brand new court. This is the first legal action that's going to take place in this brand new courtroom. So I'm sitting there, and of course I walk over to the defense counsel, and as because this is a profession, you shake their hands and greet them, and uh, uh, there was a lot of collegiality. Uh, then the defendants come in, and I, you know, as a prosecutor, you don't see them. I, I don't, you know, uh, I never, I hadn't seen them in months. Uh, most of them were in their traditional uh, African garb. But they were clearly nervous, and these were very, very bad human beings, the leadership of the Civil Defense Force. Uh, and then there's a plate glass, bulletproof glass window behind me, and so I just happened to be waiting, and again, I, I kind of glance around, and there's the people of Sierra Leone sitting behind me, waiting for me to represent them. The tribunal comes in, we all rise, it's three judges, uh, an Af a Sierra Leonean judge and two international judges in their robes. And of course you wear robes, uh, Robert Jackson never wore a robe, but now in the modern international criminal law arena, you wear a very black robe with a charbot, and so he looked very distinguished. They had mentioned whether we wanted to wear wigs and I refused. Uh, that would not be good looking at all. So. I'm sitting there and I have my opening statement and uh, my colleague is sitting next to me and my staff is behind me. And then the chief judge turns to me and he goes, Mr. Prosecutor, your opening statement. And I stood up and walked to the podium and other than the ghosts of hundreds of thousands of people standing next to me on my right, on my left, was Robert Jackson. And as I looked at the tribunal with the people of Sierra Leone behind me, I said, may it please this court. And I gave my opening statement. So that's Robert Jackson up close and personal. Frankly, I don't think it gets more personal than that. And I hope that I was able to uh, even be half the prosecutor he was. Thank you.